Welcome again, everyone. Today we're back working on the old SA200. Um, it's been for sitting for longer than I've wanted um, it to be, but last you saw, we took apart the, uh, we took off the valve cover here, and so we got three valves that are stuck all on the exhaust side, I'm pretty sure. And uh, I tried to do it in an unconventional way of just putting some PB down there and trying to get them freed up and everything. Um, I tried bending a piece of uh, metal, a uh, little piece of round stock, and trying to um, get tap the exhaust valves down, but I'm afraid I'm going to ruin them trying to do them on an angle and everything because I can't the the spark plug hole the valves are over here whereas the holes are offset they're on the intake side not the exhaust so I can't get a direct way to tap on them so I didn't want to take the head off because I didn't really have I didn't think I had what I needed but come to find out I've had what we needed the whole time. I just recently found this. It was a leftover from an old 200 I was working on. For some reason, I ordered an extra. And so we got a head gasket. Therefore, we can go ahead and take this head off and try to get this thing running. Basically, try to get the valves freed up, put it back together. Um, it shouldn't be it shouldn't be too difficult with just taking the head off. Um, we're gonna clean it up a little bit, put a new gasket, and put it back on there. So we're gonna get to work on that. But before we do, let me show you something else I just picked up. It's been a few weeks back now, but I picked up this here old Miller uh, Big D2. It's got a Perkins uh, four-cylinder in it. And when I went to look at it, there was some concerns. Um, the here rubber bushings are so worn out. It's off its mount, basically. It's, it's uh, if you can see, it's kicked to this side. But the uh, lady that I got it from, her husband recently passed away, and she didn't know much about it. She said, but she was pretty sure it ran, but the battery was dead. So I get there, hook a battery up to it, and uh, it fired off. It ran for about 10 seconds and then shut off. So I'm not sure if it's uh, just bad fuel or so something. It ran, and it ran fine for about 10 seconds, and then it shut itself off. So I don't know if there was the safety thing, maybe it, the oil sensor, um, oil pressure sensor or something like that. But basically got this thing for a good deal, I think. We're gonna go through this. Um, kind of one of those things where it came up on Marketplace and I couldn't pass it up. So um, we're gonna try to get the 200 going first, get that set to the side, and then we'll be working on this thing, hopefully. Yeah, you can see here how this uh, rubber mounts just push to the side. So all in all, we got a diesel welder for uh, pretty cheap. So let's get to work on the 200. And then we'll come back to this whenever we, uh, whenever we can. Well, how many y'all saw that coming? Cause I sure didn't somehow, but took the, uh, I had to take the uh, water pump off because this here was in the way because these are their studs. I didn't want to have to take all the studs out. So this here bypass was in the way. So I'd take that off. Well, the belt was still around it. And obviously whenever I turned the engine over to play with the valves, then yep, that's how that happened. So, um, not as bad as I thought it would be, but there is uh, like these, this one here is pretty pitted. Um, and this one's kind of pitted. There's chunks missing on the edge. Um, I'm sure it will seal decent, but we got them all. They're all freed up now. Um, I'm not going to do a uh, butt a whole lot to the, to the head since we just took off, you know, since it was already, um, 
sealed basically, but I'm just going to kind of wipe everything down. I took down all the high spots um, with a carbide scraper here. Um, going to clean it up just a little bit more and put it back together. I may have to be, go back in here, put a new um, water pump gasket on it, um, just seeing how rusty it is and whatnot. So just going to try to put it back together and see if we can get this thing to fire and run right this time. So head's all clean. We're going back together now. Um, there is a top. Um, I think that's only marking on that. So make sure that goes to the top here. Self-explanatory, uh, even though I got it backwards. Like so. Kind of. Um, throw the head on, bolt it down. I'm going to try to get the... Um, you know, the point of a stud is it's clamping uh, theoretically from both sides. So it's a more even clamp, uh, clamp load on it. And therefore, by using these and then um, torquing off of the other thread pitch, they're not going to be quite the same. So I'm going to try just real quick to get the um, nuts off of the other studs and then I put the studs back in here um, so forth. I'm going to try that real quick. And then other than that, we're going to put the head on, put this thing back together, put the... Uh, Put the carburetor back on it. Let's see if we can get this thing going again. These were not um, wanting to come off, but they do seal the coolant. So just be sure that you put a little dope on those when they go down in there. Um, and that's all. That's all I can really do on these because I'm not fighting them too much. So it's been a minute. I've been messing with the um, wiring of this. I've had to go back and look at some old videos. Couldn't get it to go. Um, finally searched enough on the old interweb, figured out the, uh, I'm, the, the firing order is 1342, but I couldn't remember which one is which one you start on. Um, so it changes. I'm pretty sure you can set it differently, but this one, in this case, number one is if you're looking at it, it's top left, one, three, four, two. Um, so, if you can't tell, we got it to run, and there's PB blaster and oil everywhere. So I'm going to go ahead and start it up real quick. Um, let it run. We don't have any water in it, so... But before we do put water in it, I'm going to go ahead and change the oil, since I have that. Because um, it definitely needs it. But we're back in business, basically. As you can see, we're burning off all that PB blaster and whatnot was in there, but sounds pretty good. Um, I'm gonna go ahead, like I said, I'm gonna change the oil real quick, and uh, then we're gonna take it outside, put some water in it, let this thing run, and I guess see if it welds. Um, that'd be the next thing. I got a stone somewhere. Um, I need to clean up the the uh, armature there a little bit, but I don't. I I think it's in my truck, but I'm not gonna go look for that right now. So. We're just gonna see if it welds like it is. We'll go from there. All right, so I've got it running. 
and welding. It would not weld at first, so I had to go find my, uh, my stone anyway. So I got the armature cleaned up, the front exciter there, and we're working, but I didn't uh, video it to start with, so let's just do a little video. Let's turn it on. Let's start this thing. So to be honest, uh, it's welding pretty terrible. The heat is definitely there, but it's like spitting and sputtering. It may just need some uh, some more run time, but yeah, it's not a uh, it's not what it should be. And I have to do some research, but I'm not sure if this should be pinned um, when you're welding or if that matters. I don't really know, but definitely uh, I'm, I want to upgrade to the electronic high and low anyway. But for the time being. Just to see if I get this work, but yeah, it's, I don't know if it's if it's idling too high or if it's running too high, or if uh, it sounds like it's a little too high, but I'm really not sure. So I need to do some digging with that. Auxiliary works for the grinder. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. Just need to do a little research, and we can go from there. I'm not sure where we left off with this machine, but it's been a few days. Um, I'm pretty sure we discussed that it was not welding properly and I had since figured that out. Um, right here it says negative, right here it says positive. Well, they are they are backwards. Basically, uh, it, was, it was on straight polarity. I wanted on, you know, want it slash needed on reverse polarity to make it run right. So that was, uh, that was part of the problem. And then, if it ain't one thing, it's another. Um, the radiator is leaking somewhere. I'm not really sure. Um, it was good. I think it was good at least. And then it's not good anymore. So luckily we have a donor machine, same machine we're, we're uh, um, taking the hood off of. So my plan anyway is just to get this here, get the radiator swapped out and get the hood on it. I gotta modify the hood because this fuel tank is all the way this way and it's still hitting on the neck on that side towards the front of the uh, machine. So basically a um, couple things to address, gotta take this off and then we can put our new radiator on here. Um, this one had coolant in it, it may be leaking too. I have no idea, but we're gonna give it a shot because it's all we got. Um, and then I was putting this cover on here. This is from the donor machine and this top hole was not drilled out um, as much as the bottom was so I started drilling this out and it was it's not a small drill bit and I broke one off and there's a piece of it stuck up in here I tried to get it out didn't really care at this point so we got to dress that later um, and still got miscellaneous stuff to add on it but I'm gonna go ahead and just get the radiator switched out and get the hood on it so that way I can get it out of the shop and we can start working on other things I'm sure some of you were thinking the same thing I was and thinking that I uh, damaged it, but it does not look like it's leaking there. It's not wet over here. Um, it's all, it looks like it's coming maybe from this very, very outside one here, but it's wet um, most of the way down here. And then obviously it's puddling right there. So, um, yep, let's get this off and uh, make a mess.
it's been running for a few minutes now. Everything's pretty warm. Got all the uh, extra moisture blown out of it and I'm not seeing any leaks. So I'm gonna call that a uh, success for now. Last thing we're gonna do is uh, modify the hood and get it to work. Um, the other things I wanna do, this will probably be the end of this video more or less once we get the hood finished up, but a couple other things I need to do. Uh, gotta get a tow cable on it, gotta wire up the, uh, the you know proper starter um, button. Got to, I wanna get a few gauges. Um, there's a uh, one wire on the other um, donor machine, so I'm gonna probably swap this out. Um, and then just kind of clean it up just a little bit. So as I mentioned before, um, we just got to take a little bit out of this hood. That tank was in a black face. It was in my, actually the first 200 I ever owned. It was in a black face and for whatever reason, that tank has slid all the way back in there. So there's no way it can go back further to, to clearance this hole. So either, you know, this, this hood is weird or Possibly the difference in the years because this is a red face. So the other, this is like a six. This is 66, I think, and the other one I have was like an 80, 87, 88, something like that. So maybe the few years difference, um, which is you know maybe why this ain't fitting. But all we gotta do is just take a little bit out here. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'm just gonna get this cut out, get this put on there. That way it's somewhat protected. Looks pretty good. As you can see, um, just took a little bit out there. I might wind up taking this to hair more when it's all said and done, but uh, I'm happy with it now. We're gonna worry about mounting it down in the next video and painting it all up and making it look, uh, look better than it is. But for now, it's gonna sit like this. Still, for uh, a 66, I'm sure it's been rebuilt once, but how is it dead? I was gonna start this up for you, but I guess I guess the battery's dead. I guess the alternator is um, is definitely on its way out because it shouldn't be. There's no reason it shouldn't start right now. So, if it ain't one thing, it's another. Thanks for watching, guys. Um, guess this will be it. We'll see you all in the next video. Thanks, guys.